our whole motto on our startup is safe, efficient, and reliable startup. So our goal is to make sure that the system's ready to go at the best possible state so that when we start up, we don't have an issue with reliability. Safe, that's always the mandate of a facility. You don't want to do anything that's unsafe. The bottom line is cutting corners at the beginning doesn't save you time at the end. Do it right, do it effective, ensure you have right startup mechanisms and right review, and you'll end up with a good solid reactor operation for the long term. The startup activity is a multi-stage activity. And that includes adding the heavy water to the system, about 60 metric tons of heavy water being added to the system. When we add the water, then we will start circulating the system, getting ready for the addition of fuel assemblies. There's approximately 200 fuel assemblies and other assemblies going into the reactor to put it into a pre-startup reactor condition. Once the reactor is uh, fueled, we'll have a systematic review of all the uh, checks and procedures that we've completed during the startup activities. And those activities will all be confirmed complete through a readiness for service process. We'll make sure that all the subsystems are ready to go. Once all those subsystems are ready to go, we'll go through a systematic startup of the reactor and bring the reactor up to full power. In total for the reactor startup process, there's 19 procedures. The 19 procedures, though, only make up a small subset of the total number of activities we have to do relative to startup. There's over 1,000 steps in our critical pass schedule right now. Some of those 19 procedures are in the order of 200, 300 steps, some are in the order of 700 steps. And those steps are a systematic confirmation that each activity as we move along is being done in a proper manner, signed off by a proper authority to achieve proper results. It's been amazing the number of people that have phoned me up and said, can you use my services? Can you use my help to bring the reactor back in service? What can I do to help the team bring the reactor back to service? And that's, that's the most important part to me is people dedicated to return this reactor to service, people staying here late at night because they want to get a job done, people going beyond the call of duty. It's just amazing when you have those type of resources that want to see success here. And everybody understands it's either your friend's grandmother or your friend's brother or sister that needs these isotopes, and it becomes personal after a while. So it doesn't take too long to take a personal aspect to starting this reactor up. I would be lying if I said there weren't unknowns because we're talking about over a thousand steps. So even if we put a component in the reactor and we go to test it and it breaks, uh, that means that it's uh, an unanticipated failure. However, if you're planning properly, you make sure that there's spares available, you make sure that you have contingency plans to deal with it. So are we going to find things that are out of the ordinary? Maybe. The bottom line is we want to put a good effort in to make sure the reactor runs long term. I see support from the president to the people in the field, to everybody you talk to on this project, the plant understands the importance of NRU. The executive is here to support us. If we need something, we get it. And that's the most important thing for me is that we have the support to ensure this is done reliably and safely. It's an awesome facility. The people who ran the facility in the early days, the people who designed it, it's a credit to them. They did a phenomenal job that a reactor that's 52 years old is still one of the top reactors in the world. It's an amazing facility.